Hi guys, it's Carol. How are ya? I am doing really well. I haven't made a video in a week again because the days just get away from me. But, and every day I say, I need to make a video today and then life happens and I don't get there. But I'm here today. How are you guys doing? What you got going on at your house? Um, I'm, I'm going to do a, tell you about a book. But first, I want to say thank you for everybody who um, was praying for my daughter that had that virus, um, for all the good wishes and good vibes and all that stuff. She didn't was never hospitalized. Uh, she had to miss 10 days of work, and she's totally exhausted, but had to go back to work. Evidently, that exhaustion is one of the... Things about that virus that just lingers on for a long time. Her boyfriend, he was in the hospital, I don't know how many days, like a week, and he was dismissed, but he had to, he's on oxygen at home now, which uh, he can't work. Um, uh, and he's a younger guy. I mean, he's in his early 40s, but you know, he was healthy until he got this virus, and now he is at home on oxygen. But anyway, thank you. Uh, my friend Brenda at Maniac Grammy's Homestead, her son got out of the hospital and is doing well. So, great. <laughs> Things are looking up for a lot of people. I, I feel Sorry for anybody who has that virus at this time and can't be with their families around the holiday for sure. But anyway, thank you guys. And I want I want to tell you something that happened that just made me cry. Um, I mean, it just made me cry. My daughter, uh, while the boyfriend was in the hospital, did an order of groceries, went to pick them up, and... Uh, then she, after she picked her groceries up, she was going to the gas pumps in the parking lot to get gas. Well, she pulled up to the pumps, and there was a lady that was pointing the other direction on the other side of the pumps, and she came over and knocked on my daughter's window, and she said, I assume you're going to here to get gas, but I want to give you gas. Uh, and my daughter said, what? <laughs> yeah. And this lady said she had prepaid $25 for gas. Her car would only take 11 And instead of going in to the little convenience store there and getting her money back that she didn't, you know, her car didn't take all that much gas, she said, just, I want you to pull your car around here. My daughter's going to hold the nozzle up so it doesn't, you know, if you hang it up, then it's all over with. She's going to hold the nozzle up until you can pull your car around here and then you can have the rest of the gas that I've already paid for. And my daughter was just blown away at that somebody would do this. She had never met her before. She had no idea who this lady was. And she said, she honestly, she didn't look like she had money to spare. She was just normal, kind of like us. But she insisted. So my daughter pulled her car around, got $14 worth of gas for free. <laughs> and I thought, I just bawled because I thought, you know, I really think the Holy Spirit said to this woman, that lady needs some cheering up today. Maybe you can give that gas to her. <laughs> um, you know, whenever we do acts of kindness for other people, whether it's a small thing or a large thing, you never know how wonderful it is for the real person on the receiving end. Um, that just that just made Becky's day. She and her boyfriend both don't have sick leave, so they had just lost um, income for Becky for 10 days and he still can't go back to work. So, and they are not rich people by any means. So getting a free tank of gas was just a big blessing for her. Um, people brought meals to them. That was a big blessing. Um, uh, somebody that they went to high school with, but they hadn't seen in years and weren't really that close friends that, that anyway, Somebody saw on Facebook the, that Becky and the boyfriend had this virus and brought eight bags of groceries to her house for her. And she left them on the porch because, you know, they were in, Becky was in quarantine. She, the lady couldn't come in, but left them, told her she was coming and she'd leave them on the porch and left eight bags of groceries, which to 
us is just like, wow, <laughs> wow. That was a wonderful blessing for her too. Um, anyway, back to this book I want to tell you about. It's called Christmas by the Book. It is by Anne Marie Ryan. I saw it recommended over and over and over on book sites that I go to. And so I put a hold on it at my library. I, I read biographies and I read cozy mysteries. For some reason, I thought this was cozy mystery because that's what I was looking up on these sites. No, it's, it's just a, a, a novel. It's not a mystery, but it's really, really good. Um, Christmas by the Book takes place at Christmas. Um, takes place in London. And um, this little bookstore is owned by a woman. Uh, her mom was a single mom. And her mom started this bookstore. And they lived above the bookstore in an apartment in the building. Above the bookstore. So this lady's lived there all her life. When her mother passed away, she took over the bookstore. And uh, she eventually met a man that was just passing through their town, and they got married. He came from a well-to-do family. Um, his father expected him to take over the family business, but he fell in love with this woman. He knew she was staying with the bookstore, and they got married. He gave up that uh, guaranteed good job to be with this woman that he loved. Well, anyway, he has a heart attack at, at, before the book starts, and she is very worried about him and his heart, and she doesn't want him to worry about anything. So she tells him that she's taking over, taking care of the books for the bookstore, the, I mean the financial part, and for him not to worry about anything. And so he doesn't know what's going on. The truth is the bookstore's in trouble. There, She's at the point where she's going to lose the bookstore because customers come in and look at the books and say, I can get this cheaper online and don't buy from her. They just come in to look at the books, <laughs> um, which I'm sure happens a lot in the world today because little uh, small businesses can't compete with big stores like Walmart and Amazon that you can just order and get discounts on. But anyway, that's... Well, that's what's going on. He doesn't know the bookstore's in trouble. She's very fear fearful that she's going to lose it, uh, and, which is almost assuredly what's going to happen. Um, but that this Christmas in the book, they decided they were going to give away six books to somebody who needs cheering up for whatever reason. So they told all their customers they have in this contest, they could nominate a person who needs um, cheering up that Christmas season. And so the, the man and the woman in this book picked out six books that uh, uh, meant something to them that were really good books that they wanted to give. And then they wrapped them up. And then they had no idea what title was under the wrapping paper. But anyway, people submitted names, and they chose six names out of the group. And then the woman took the six books and went around to every home of, of the six people they chose and just slid the book in the letter slot. Evidently, in London, a lot of homes have just a, a letter slot in the door where the mail is just stuck through the slot. And so she did that. She just dropped them off into the letter slot at these houses of these people and uh, went on. Now, the people did not know where this gift came from. And um, as it turned out, she didn't know which book she was leaving because they had, were, had gift wrapped them. Uh, as it turned out, of course, the book each of the six people got was just the one that they needed to get that year. And... Um, it was just a very warm, inspiring, good story. Uh, Christmas by the Book, Anne Marie Ryan. Now, the only thing I did not like about this book um, was it has some language in it. Just about, I think, three times 
somebody says the F word, and I don't like that at all. I don't, I don't let people come in my home and talk ugly um, at all. I, I, that's not a part of my life, and I don't want that kind of spirit in my home. So we, I, my kids all know. <laughs> and mom's house, you don't talk ugly. Um, anyway, the, pe the six people that are getting a book are all either in a very lonely situation or a very traumatized situation or a very heartbroken situation. And one is a teenage boy. And he's the one that says that word a couple of times. Um, so if that'll offend you, don't read it. But otherwise, it is a wonderful book. Um, I'm going to see if she's what else she's written. I don't know this author. But anyway, Christmas by the Book. Good book. Between now and Christmas, I'm going to read uh, a bunch of books that are the theme is Christmas. Most of the ones I've put a hold on the, at the library are cozy mysteries because I like them because there's no ugly language and there's no uh, descriptive sexual scenes. I don't like, I don't need that. Um, and that's why I read a lot of cozy mysteries instead of maybe contemporary novels. Um, but anyway, I picked out a whole bunch that I put holds on and I'm going to be reading those and I'll tell you about them as I read them. Um, I've got one or two that are not cozy mysteries that are just fiction uh, like this that I'll tell you about. But anyway, I love to, during this time of year, I love to read books where the theme is Christmas. If you go to my playlist, I have a list of Christmas books that I often read every single year um, that I think are just really, really good, good heartwarming books. If you go to my playlist, I don't know if those books are listed under uh, Christmas or if it's under recommended books. Probably Christmas. But anyway, you can go there and see what books I've recommended in the past. Okay, guys, I'm going to go now. I hope you're well and happy and are with the family that you want to be with and everything's going good and everybody's well, mostly. I will talk to you in another video. See ya. Bye-bye.